Interested in Bitcoin? Need to know more about cryptocurrency? How about buying, selling, and mining? Then listen to Gary Leland and Tony Sakala, better known as the Crypto Cousins, on the Crypto Cousins Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Crypto Cousins Podcast. Gary Leland here and I'm joined by... Tony Sakala. And together we are... The crypto, crypto cousins. cousins. <laughs> <laughs> we Tony, I just want to, yeah. before we get going, I want to, you know, normally people start off their show with what the date is. You know, they may say today is the whatever. But I think we should tell people what the price of Bitcoin is at the beginning of our show. Then when people hear these shows six months later, they'll have more, I think they'll be able, able to more rationalize the time frame of the show. As to how it compares, if Bitcoin's fifty thousand dollars, and they hear our price, I go, "Oh, this was a long time ago." I think this will be would be more effective than giving the date. Is I think the, that's a great idea. So I'm it's like say, a milestone. It's like it a is, milestone. It is, and, and it kind of keeps people up too who are listening to their first episode because I like today. Today, Bitcoin is five thousand seven hundred three dollars, and it's up a hundred and seventeen dollars in the last week for. Gain of two percent—that's a pretty good return. But people hear that every week, Tony. I think that would be a better way for them to keep up with where we're at in the world. I like that. I like that a lot. You know, and the percentage is uh, another important thing because it doesn't take much. I mean, for Bitcoin to go up ten percent, that's five hundred and seventy dollars. You know, that's not a lot of movement, but it's a lot of movement in people's minds. It's probably been up that much in the last month. If I had the guess. month, the month, if that's the other one we could do, the percentage over the month has been crazy. Yeah, because I, I bet it's been up that much. I'm, I'm looking right now. It's been up. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. Oh, oh, that was Ethereum. I'm sorry. Bitcoin <laughs> is up in the last month. Is this right? This doesn't seem right. It says it's up in the last month. I'm looking at the crack, and it says it's up two thousand thirty-five dollars and eighty cents for an increase of fifty-five point two percent. It isn't it hard to believe. <laughs> yes, it's hard to believe. That's 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 close to the number I was looking at. So ten percent. Forget that. We're talking fifty-five percent. First of all, Tony, let me state uh, just to make sure everybody knows we are not a financial advisors. We're just two guys interested in Bitcoin. One guy, Tony, has been in it a long time. I've been in it a month. And we're using this show to explore and share our journey through Bitcoin. So make sure you do your own due diligence and check it out because we are not financial advisors. We're just talking and just listen to our show. Don't take our advice. <laughs> yes, I don't want to be a financial advisor. I've never grew up wanting to be a financial advisor. Neither never do thought. I. I can't no. believe that. Well, I, I don't know why. I guess I haven't looked at the month increase on that. So that is, fan that is just mind-boggling. I've never gotten that kind of return on anything else I've done before. Well, uh, that brings us to our news article of the week, actually. Oh, yeah, I guess it does. The headline on the philly.com website, Bitcoin is up 825% this year, surpassing the value of American Express. Wow. That is going crazy. And I'll have the link, direct link for that in the show notes for anyone that's uh, interested in reading that article. Um, yeah, that's more than American Express Surpassing the value of American Express. So, yeah, right now uh, it crossed over $100 billion in value uh, um, last Friday when it was up over $6,000. The high is a little over 6100 I enjoyed and watching it break that, as a matter of fact. I kept refreshing my page to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a man landing on the moon. Yeah, yeah, it, it kind of is. So uh, it, a hundred billion in value, and uh, now it's roughly uh, whatever it's in the 90, 90 billion in value. And they uh, the article talks about how long it took for certain institutions to reach that stage. Uh, what does he say? New York real estate is worth ten times the value of Bitcoin, but it didn't pass the one hundred billion value mark until the seventies roughly 310 years after the territory was named after the Duke of York. And there's $8 trillion worth of gold in the world, $15 trillion worth of treasury bonds, $25 trillion in the stock market. Actually, Bitcoin's small compared to these. 
It really is. It's the baby on the new baby on the block, only seven years old, seven or so years old. So, and I hear a lot of people, uh, uh, not a lot of people, but I hear people saying cryptocurrency is a bubble like um, the tech bubble was. You know, in the tech bubble, but the tech bubble was in the trillions. The money invested in the tech. This is still in the billions. So. This is not that big yet to be. If it is a bubble, I personally don't think it's at the top of the bubble. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it was you who mentioned that Trace uh, Trace Meyer said that there's no way Bitcoin will ever go back down to zero. He said it had never been zero. <laughs> ever. It had never been ever. It would ever go back. It had never been. He is also was the first person to make the statement that a Bitcoin could be worth over a million. Did you know that? Oh, I didn't know that. He was the first person to make that call that it could be over. Actually, I think he said one and a half million as was his call that it could be. He didn't say it would be. He said he just br- was the first person to bring up the possibility, I guess. Wow. So he's been doing this. I listened to his show, his podcast, and uh, which I like a lot. And he, uh, very informative show but i've listened to like 50 episodes i think so i've consumed more information in the last 30 days on cryptocurrency than i probably have consumed on any subject in my life in such a small amount i've listened i think every episode of every podcast that there is in itunes i have watched every night i go home and watch one to two shows on youtube about it i've read blog i mean i am I don't know near as much as I should, but I have really gained a lot of uh, knowledge enough that I feel comfortable talking about um, cryptocurrency. Not that I know it all. And um, I think this article, though, is a good example of where of showing what's happening with Bitcoin, which is the subject for this week's show is Bitcoin. Um, And I'm doing... Tony's doing an article of the week. I'm doing the tool of the week. And this week I'm doing Coinbase. And Coinbase is a website, but I'm calling it a tool for these purposes. Everybody, yeah, everybody tell me about Bitcoin. Well, Coinbase. everybody asks me, where do you get Bitcoin? That's one of the biggest questions. Where do you get it at? I want some Bitcoin. Where do I go? I mean, do I go meet some guy in a dark, shady alley? <laughs> I mean, here's $100. <laughs> the Bitcoin Give me- ATM. That's where you go, the Bitcoin ATM. Well, you could, but they're pretty expensive. I, I've investigated two of those in my area, but there's a site called Coinbase. It's at Coinbase.com, direct link to the site, and you can buy Bitcoin there and, and other currencies, which we won't get into. But I want to give you this link, and I want to give you our affiliate link to the site, um, because if you use our affiliate link, whenever you buy your first $100 worth of coins, of, crypt, of Bitcoin, they give you $10 worth free, and they give us 10 free. And Tony, we've had like five people this week already use our affiliate link, and which is really nice. It helps us uh, do the show, but the direct link for that is CryptoCousins.com slash Coinbase. Crypto That's Cous- a great deal. So someone gets, they get, as soon as they get 100, so getting 110 in crypto dollars then because they use the link. Right. So and, they're getting 100, they get 110. And $10, that free $10. Well, Bitcoin keeps going up like it does. That could be worth a hundred dollars in a year. Crip, yes, exactly. So when you when you think of it that way, crypto dollar, I mean, eight hundred percent. If they did it in January of this year, it'd already be worth eighty. Does that make sense? Is that eighty? No, that's too much. It'd be worth eighteen. No, no, it's no, ten. It's ten. And so it'd be worth. If it's ten. Went up eight hundred percent. That'd be. That'd be eight hundred. <laughs> we're a little we're confused 80 80 80, I think eight, right on the 80 80 8 times yeah, 8 so times it'd be, uh, it'd be $80 uh, worth uh, 80 uh, so yeah so that's the thing so remember that you may want to even go there if you're going to follow our show and keep up with our show you may want to go ahead and go to cryptocousins.com slash coinbase open up your account you don't have to put any money in and get it ready and when you're ready to buy then you can go upload your money and buy there and as soon as you buy you'll get $10 worth for free and, and just to let you know, every link we ever give out will be CryptoCousins.com slash something. So it makes it easy for users to know. But that is my tool of the week. It's a website where you buy Coinbase because I figure if everybody's new into Bitcoin, 
you're going to need to know where to get it if you want to follow along. Even if you only, I've had a lot of people, you know, several people go, "Hey, I can't afford to buy a Bitcoin. It's five thousand, almost six thousand dollars. I'm going to buy a thousand dollars worth, or I'm going to buy two hundred dollars worth just to get involved with it." And, and that's a good way to get involved and get comfortable with it. And yeah, uh, you don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin. That's for sure. No, no. You, you know, matter of fact, I, my daughter wants to get involved, and she said. I can't afford to buy six thousand, but I can buy a thousand. Should I do it? And I said, well, I told my daughter to do it. I said, you should go ahead and do it. I don't think you can lose. I wouldn't tell her if I didn't think it was a good thing to do. But Tony, today's topic is for beginners. It's what is Bitcoin, and we're, we're Tony. We're kind of like trying to start from the beginning and educate people all the way through as to what is going on, like today's Bitcoin, and we're probably going to do blockchain. We're going to do all these things, so you can learn on every episode what we're learning or have learned. So, Tony, let's start out with what is Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin can be described as a digital currency. And what we mean by that is that it doesn't require you to have an account with a central person. It's a decentralized digital currency. So you don't need to have a bank or a government issue the money you don't need to have a central institution make sure that you're a real person to give you the money. You can actually go on the network, get some money through an exchange or a place like Coinbase or a digital ATM or what have you, and that money isn't tied to your identity. It doesn't, doesn't require that you show a license or an ID or be a type of person that a bank wants to do business with. And that's the big difference. The banking industry has a lock on who they want to do business with. And this digital currency is really a favorite of libertarians because they feel like it's the, the way that free people can interact with each other, communicate with each other, send value back and forth either across town. Well, it's not backed by anything like American money. It's not backed by anything. I'm scared of that because I don't understand. How can it be money if it's not backed by anything? That's what I hear, Tony. So what is the answer to that? Well, the answer to that is, have you looked at your bank account lately? Have you looked at how the actual fiat currencies have done over the last 100 years? Um, what exactly is that backing buying you? Uh, you put your money under your mattress 10 years later. You take that money out of your mattress, good luck trying to buy what you bought in 2007, in 2017. Not the same value. Your money has lost value. It's called inflation. And we think of it, we, we think of it subconsciously, oh, it's inflation, it's inflation. It's inflation, I mean, it's literally, you're burning a couple of those dollars every few seconds. It's a hidden tax. It's a hidden tax. Good I way of putting it. I think a lot of people think, Tony, that U.S. money is backed by gold for some reason. My wife did. Mm, yeah, right. That was the old story. When did we go off the gold standard? Yeah, um, in the 70s. Nixon in the 70s. Did. Nixon signed. But yes, she's like, exactly. she was like, I said, no, no, gold's not backed by, dollars aren't backed by gold. They're just backed by the U.S. government saying that we, we're going to take care of it. So you're just kind of taking the word. So really, Bitcoin backing... Our U.S. dollar backing is nothing better than Bitcoins. I mean, it's not backed by gold or silver or anything. It's just backed by someone else's word on it. So when you really step back from a currency, when you step back from what is money, it's really just a belief. It's what we believe in. If someone will take your money, your dollar, your shiny coin, your seashell from the beach, if they take it and return a service or a product to you, then that's that has value. Right. Exactly. You know, another thing um, I hear a lot of people are no – see, I, why I, I'm going to have to break my habit to that. <laughs> I did it again. You hear that? A lot of people. Gary, yeah, how many yeah. people? Yeah. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start saying my wife that way because I know she's asked all these questions. She's all concerned about the fact – that the inventor of Bitcoin is unknown. Mm. Why, why is this guy? 
why is he why does no one know who invented Bitcoin? Why what's why do you keep it a secret? Is he is he scared of something? Is there something wrong? Well, I think that's a really great question to ask because you know, wow, if you invented something so wonderful, wouldn't you want people to pat you on the back? But but let me tell you, I read the story in Wired magazine. <clears throat> When they went on the search for Satoshi Nakamoto, and let me tell you, it was and that's not the inventor, pretty. Satoshi Nakamoto. Not pretty at all. <clears throat> they thought it was this guy Craig Wright in Australia. I mean, they went into his house. I think it was with the battering ram. You know, they just came straight through the door. You know, and they just seized all the computers. And uh, so the state, in general, doesn't matter what flag they're flying. The state, in general, is not so happy with a cryptocurrency that can generate transactions outside of their domain. So is that the reason you think he foresaw that it would not be a good thing to uh, be known? I, yeah, I think that would be real. That's one of the really good ideas. I would think also that he has a lot of Bitcoin. It's a, I th believe I heard it was 1 million Bitcoin. So if that's true, uh, I believe uh, he's – on his way to becoming the first trillionaire. And I would think, don't hold me this, but just going from past history and using gold as an example, um, there's been a lot of wars fought and people killed for gold. Like the Incas were destroyed for their gold. Mm -hmm. We didn't go in there, the Spaniards didn't destroy the Incas because they were just like, oh, no, nah, we don't like those guys. They wanted their gold. <laughs> Yeah. So I think governments don't have any problem when it comes to that type of money. That's probably why they grabbed all those computers, hoping there was a billion trillion dollars worth of Bitcoin on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they've made some mistakes, too. Now, uh, that's the real beauty of Bitcoin. You can transmit Bitcoin to any other wallet in the world, and the Bitcoin network is not going to censor you. The Bitcoin network is not going to look and see... Wait, is this a rich guy, a poor guy, white skin, brown skin? It's not asking those questions. It's just doing the mathematics. The Bitcoin can be described as software. It is really, that's the best way of describing it. It's software for accounting for the value of a wallet. And the ledger that keeps track of all those transactions is called the Bitcoin blockchain. And the Bitcoin blockchain records all of those transactions, but there are no names and addresses associated with it. The address is just a, a number. So the good example of that is, I think it was WikiLeaks in 2010, uh, was, uh, tr there was an attempt to defund WikiLeaks. They didn't want people to send money to WikiLeaks because of the whistleblowing that they had done. So the governments persuaded PayPal and the banks to not send money to WikiLeaks. So they were forced to take Bitcoin. And it was, uh, I think it was just last week when um, they announced that they thanked the U.S. government because all of their investment in Bitcoin, which started in 2010, increased in value 50,000%. Oh, my Lord. Wow. You know, um, another thing my wife has a problem with, I caught myself that time, <laughs> is that she can't hold Bitcoin. Mm. It's not real. I can't hold it. And I think I've come up with the answer for this one. Just for my knowledge gathering. And tell me if you like this answer, Tony. When someone says this. Mm -hmm. There are things that are real. And there are things that are not real. Like Puff the Magic Dragon. We all know that Puff the Magic Dragon is not real. So we throw the unreal out, and then you have real, but you have two kinds of reals. You have physical real, like the computer you're using right now to, record, to talk with me on, or the chair I'm sitting in. These are real. But you also have real that you can't touch, like math. I don't think you could argue with me that one plus one is two, that one is a real thing. That math is real, but you can't touch math. It, that's a really good way of putting it. So Bitcoin is like math. It's real, but you can't touch it, just like you can't touch math, just like you can't touch gravity. It's real, but you can't touch it. 
Well, and you can tell your wife, you know, that most of the money she spends probably goes through a plastic card with magnetic bits on it that you really can't see. And that card and those numbers, they really aren't real either. They are not tangible that you can touch them. But they do buy food, clothing, shoes, good stuff. You know, Tony, I think most people are, I don't know about most people, I think my, my wife thought that, okay, so they needed the, more money in the U.S. government, so they actually printed paper every time they needed more money. Mm-hmm. She thinks, oh, well, we got to raise the, the, the limit of how much money we can spend. Start the printing presses. And I'm going, no, Kathy. They just like go onto the computer and add some more O's, zeros to it. They don't print that every time. There's no difference between adding more zeros to the amount of dollars there are on a computer and Bitcoin to me. Yeah, that's a really good way of putting it. I, I, I'm, yeah, that's pretty shocking. I mean, just to me, and then, and then. And then another thing Kathy wants to know is, where can I spend Bitcoin? Can I spend this stuff? I mean, am I just going to own this stuff forever like I do the Beanie Babies that I bought with she bought with her kids back in the 90s? Or can you spend this stuff? I would be the first to say that the Bitcoin economy hasn't taken off yet. Uh, you can find places, sure, overstock and other places will take Bitcoin. Uh, but the way that it has been introduced and the the way that it's been so uh, volatile has really kept the, the merchant aspect of Bitcoin to a minimum. Uh, the real reason, the use case behind Bitcoin – uh, is that you can send it anywhere without restriction. And if you're going to sign up, uh, buy a computer from Dell, you're going to give them your name, address anyway. You might as well give them your credit card. But when you want to go online and maybe buy something else that somebody might not be so happy about, uh, I'm not going to name what You can use your imagination, but the, people have used Bitcoin for other things things that uh, that maybe the state doesn't care for you to uh, smoke or drink or eat or snort. Uh, let's just put it that way. And so people use Bitcoin for those things. You know, I saw, or I, let me rephrase it, I heard on the podcast I was listening to the other day that if you took all the money, because people talk about this illegal stuff going on in Bitcoin, which is one of the reasons Bitcoin grew to begin with. Uh, but if you took all the money that was hidden offshore from the government and put it in Bitcoin, that that would be enough to create the demand for it to go up to a million dollars a coin, just that money that's offshore hidden. Mm. So it's not like all the legal money in the world is in Bitcoin. If it was, it'd be the best thing that would happen for me, you and me. <laughs> so right. Our Bitcoin right. would just go up tremendously. So that does affect it, but it's a small pittance of it that's in there compared to what is offshore and just off what's offshore hidden. You know, it's a small pittance of it that's in there. The Bitcoin economy today, I mean, I would guess, venture to guess that it's mostly in investments. People are speculating. Uh, they want to have it because it is the first coin. And that, to me, is a good reason to continue to invest in it. Uh, there's no, uh, whenever I've spent Bitcoin, it's been because the vendor didn't take anything else. And uh, of course, the, uh, the acceptance of it and the transfer of it will improve as the software improves. Right now, the software, even the software on the phones for uh, wallets is, uh, is still rudimentary. Uh, you and I have set up wallets you know, we've sat there and fuddled our way through, and uh, <clears throat> it's it's not an easy process. Now, I did watch a show the other day, Tony, about this guy. I can't remember his name, but he works for a Bitcoin company. He gets paid in Bitcoin completely. His whole paycheck is Bitcoin. Mm. And it w they followed him on this show, and he went to 
this grocery store. What's this grocery store that Amazon just bought? Um, Whole Foods? Whole Foods. He went to Whole Foods and did his grocery shopping and went to the checkout counter. And the lady with him, you know, the crew, I guess a camera crew and a inter- lady doing the interview was with him. And she goes, well, how are you going to pay for this? They don't accept Bitcoin at Whole Foods. And I thought this was really interesting. He had an app on his iPhone where you could buy gift cards um. with Bitcoin. And it was a gift card app. It wasn't made for Bitcoin. It was just an app where you could buy gift cards. And they took Bitcoin. They took dollars. They took a lot of things. But they also took Bitcoin. So they rang up his food. It was $182. He bought a Whole Foods gift card for $182. While he was standing in line, showed her the QR code. She scanned it, and he left his store. That's very clever. So he said he has not used cash in almost a year. He's traveled the whole world. He eats every week. He does entertainment. There are enough gift cards available now everywhere. And in another example is in Japan, where Bitcoin has been highly received in Japan. I mean, it's like super received over there. I saw where there's like maybe 100,000 stores in Japan or 90,000 that accept Bitcoin. Wow. So, so just the fact, whether this is happening in the U.S. or not, just the fact that this is happening in a tech-savvy country like Japan means that people are going to make tools to make it easier and easier to accept Bitcoin. I also saw where there's a credit card company now coming out just for Bitcoin. And you get this credit card, like a MasterCard or Visa-type card, and you, like a debit card, I guess, is more like what it would be buying. You put the some Bitcoins on there, just like you would money for a debit card. And people can go and spend that in a credit card machine. And the thing that it does, and a lot of people don't realize this, but like, for instance, when I was in, this week I was in Europe all week. I just got back from family vacation in Europe. And when I took my American credit card in Greece and bought something, the store in Greece did not get American dollars. They got euros. I mean, it converted it automatically for them. It's not like I buy something, they have to go, oh, no, we got these American dollars. What do we do with these? You like that mm, accent? Some more Italian. That- <laughs> <laughs> but it's not like that happens. They get euros. If someone comes to my store here in the U.S. with a credit card from France and buy something, when I look at my account the next day, I don't have all these American dollars and, oh, and 20 euros. I have all these American dollars. It converts it automatically. And that's what this credit card does That to get back to the original part of the story. You put in Bitcoins, but when you buy something with it, it automatically converts it to the country's currency for them. So they're not going, oh, great. I took Today I got $500 in sales and half a Bitcoin. What do I do with this half a Bitcoin? No, they got $600 worth of sales or $700 worth of sales. So it's done automatically. That's the kind of technology that's being built right now. We're seeing a lot of great technologies being built right now. You know, the the Bitcoin network has grown, has its growing pains, uh, but there are growing new solutions that are called off-chain solutions that let people spend money off of the blockchain, off of the Bitcoin blockchain, and, and those side chains enable people to do interesting things really fast they can make transactions and then they get reconciled on the main blockchain in a separate fashion so we're seeing so much innovation right now that we're um i mean it's mind-boggling uh you you know uh every day there's something new coming out there's there's also i think when we talk about bitcoin it's probably fair to, to talk a little bit not to confuse folks but about all the altcoins well, also, before we leave Bitcoin, I think also it would be important to let people know that there are only, will ever be, 21 million Bitcoin. That's the most important factor regarding the whole inflation question. They can't Bitcoin, make more. They can't make more. The mathematics, the software says we're, gonna, we're going to 
create 21 million bitcoins and those 21 million will be the only ones that will be able will be in charge of handling a global economy and right now there are 16 or 15 million bitcoins and the last of them will be mined or produced in the year 2140 i think Mm -hmm. yes the last hundred years is going to be a very slow production of bitcoins but you know i i heard on another show see i've gained a lot of information lately this guy projected that in the bitcoin lost have you ever heard of this projection the bitcoin lost mm -hmm. people throwing away computers with bitcoin on it mm -hmm. are just losing the keys to their bitcoin so mm -hmm. it's out there but they have no way to get it you know so there's like all this Bitcoin floating around in the world that's off the market, basically. So even though there's 16 million, 16 million Bitcoins produced, this guy projected somehow, and I, I can't go, nor do I understand it, but his projection was that a million Bitcoins are lost. Wow. That they're just lost, even though they exist, no one will ever be able to spend these coins because the people have lost their keys. They threw away the Bitcoins with a hard drive when Bitcoins were 50 cents a piece. You go, who would throw away a Bitcoin? Well, maybe they had 1,000 Bitcoins on there, and they were worth 25 cents. Mm -hmm. And so when their computer crashed, they just threw the whole computer in the dump. Now they're going, gosh, there's a $5 million in the dump in a computer hard drive. So, But this guy had projected that a million dollars worth of Bitcoin, or a million Bitcoin were just gone. So there wasn't going to be 21 million in circulation. There would only be 20 million in circulation. Well, making them even more valuable. Making them more valuable. Now, I just wanted to get into the amount before we went into the other coins. Um, in our, we're getting close to hitting our time here, so maybe we should make that quick on the other coins and then wrap this up. Exactly. That's a great. Uh, that's a great point. But the the reason I just want to bring up because people are going to say, well, what about the other coins? I hear, but well, isn't there a Bitcoin? There's a Bitcoin that there's lots of different coins. Probably the number two coin, uh, Ethereum, and number three coin, Litecoin. You know, those are the big three. Uh, what are they? They're what they are similar but different. They are digital currencies. Uh, but someone else had an idea. They said, you know what? We think we can do something better. We don't want to develop on the Bitcoin uh, blockchain. We want to do something better. And uh, we want it to be ours. And we want to be the, the you know, in charge of it. And so Ethereum started out uh, that way. Uh, and Litecoin is uh, different. It uses a different set of mathematics to generate the new Bitcoins uh, or the new Litecoins. And uh, each of them have their own flavors, and uh, it, it's it's none none of them. They're all they all have their own unique personality. It's like going to Baskin Robbins. There's 31 flavors. Well, I just bought some Ethereum last week. I bought 11 coins. I thought I needed to throw something in there. I've been buying nothing but Bitcoin, but I thought I would throw something in there so I could start messing around with that too. Mm -hmm. Diversify the portfolio. Yeah. Get a little portfolio. Hey, I do mm -hmm. want to let everybody know, Tony, have you seen the numbers on our social media following? It's going through the roof. It's going our our we haven't even had episode one of a podcast yet. We had what I would call what would we call a pilot? A pilot episode, fifteen minutes long, just so that we could get it in iTunes and get it in the Android Play Store, and get it everywhere. We've had over 800 listens to the pilot already. Our Twitter's over 1,000, and our Instagram is getting ready to break 2,000 followers. I mean, we haven't even really officially done one full episode, and we already have all these numbers. That's really amazing. Well, but, I think we're, we're in the right place at the right time. Could be. I want to make sure everybody knows, if you want to follow us on Instagram, go to CryptoCousins.com slash Instagram. You want to follow us on Twitter? CryptoCousins.com slash Twitter. If you want to follow us on, subscribe to us on iTunes. If you just heard this on the site or something, CryptoCousins.com slash iTunes. I hope everybody's starting to figure out this uh, little way this works here. If you want to hear us on Android, you have an Android phone, CryptoCousins.com slash play. You know, so basically whatever you want to find us at, type <laughs> in CryptoCousins.com slash that thing and we should be there. But I want to make sure everybody knows that and subscribes to the show because 
I have a feeling this show is going to take off like a rocket, Tony. Well, there's no doubt that we have tapped into something. People want to know about Bitcoin. They want to know about crypto. And they don't want people talking, you know, in ling mumbo jumbo jargony terms. Uh, they want to just get the information straight. And, uh, you know, we've been in it long enough to know that well, podcasting. <laughs> yeah, well, you, well, your one month is really like 80 months. <laughs> It's uh, you're you've you've dived so deep, but you know podcasting, and you know people just want to be spoken to. Just uh, just they really want to hear the information straight. Hey, and also Tony, we want to hear from our listeners and get their questions and answer them on the show. So if you have a question, call us at seven four seven 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 nine four seven one. And That's 747-777-9471. Got a lot of sevens there. That actually worked out pretty good there, Tony. <laughs> so, but uh, if you didn't get that and you're in your car or something, you can listen to this when you get home. But send us your questions and we'll try to answer, start answering a question or two on the shows. And before we leave, Tony, I also want to make sure everybody knows about the Texas Bitcoin Conference in Austin this week. Uh, on October 28th and 29th this weekend, it's by Linda Marie Snow. And that's at TexasBitcoinConference.com. I'll be there. I have a press pass. Tony can't join me. He has another conference. Are, are you in Florida? Is that right? I'm in Orlando this in, week. Yeah. So I'll be there doing interviews and stuff for you guys to hear. So if you're there and you see me, you probably won't know who I am. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Since you're only hearing me. But if you do see me and you know me, come over and say hi. But I think this looks like a great conference in Austin this weekend. So I'll be there working hard for you, trying to get some more information. I'm sure you're going to meet and interview the most amazing people, Gary. Oh, I'm really kind of excited about it. And also want to let people know, if you want to help us out, like going down there, you know, help us out on things, because we want to do a lot of things that bring you information. Oh, you can always go to CryptoCousins.com slash donate. That might be the most important link that we give you. CryptoCousins.com slash donate. If you want to send us a Satoshi, we'll take it. Right? Yeah, we'll take a Satoshi. We'll take a single Satoshi. That's fine. Go ahead and send us a Satoshi. What do you, what but, do you think a Satoshi's worth? Well, I think a Satoshi's worth exactly, uh, one, what is it? One, uh, 20,000 Satoshis is, I believe, is $1. So, so it's not much money. But we'll still take it. And for those who don't know what a Satoshi is, that is the smallest denomination a Bitcoin can be broken. And that's something we didn't even cover, Tony. Yes. Yeah, that, that's, quick, that's, a lot of people go, yeah. what am I going to uh, do with a $6,000 mm -hmm. Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoins are made to be broken down into tenths, hundreds, thousands. Even down to a hundred millionth. A hundred millionth of a Bitcoin is it's one a Satoshi. Satoshi. So, yeah, so the more valuable Bitcoins get... The more broken, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but the more broken down or the smaller piece of a Bitcoin you'd use to buy something. In the old days, we'd have Bitcoin faucets and the faucets would drip out Bitcoins because they were worth, you know, 50 cents a dollar or whatever. And the people were just giving them away. So today there's Satoshi faucets. People giving away Satoshis. You go and click on something or you watch someone's ad and you can make some Satoshis. So that's another way to make Bitcoin. But I don't trust those sites that generally give you a couple hundred Satoshis. And, and just before you're about to leave, they say, create an account and then, then you'll get your Satoshis. And then you have to spin a wheel. And then Oh, is that how that works? I've, it's, I've done it's, it's, a little, it's a little shady. I tried it a couple of times. And, and I ended up spinning the wheel and then losing all my Satoshi. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Hey, also, if anyone wants to send us an email, our email is thecryptocousins at gmail.com. I want to make sure and get that out there, Tony. So, yeah, I didn't know. I've seen those um, those faucets for Satoshis and people going, hey, 100 free Satoshis that I never knew. Yeah, I'm staying away from those things. Uh, yeah, it, I think there's a good chance. There's not a good chance, but there's a non-zero chance that you'll get pick up a virus. <laughs> Go into one of those sites. Something. I, I agree with you there. <laughs> so, Tony, hey, I'm. Uh, I hope everybody enjoys this episode. Is there anything you want to leave uh, everybody with before we get out of here? Because we went a little overboard. But gosh, we have so much to talk about, especially on this subject. Well, I just want to leave people with one thing. Maybe we want might want to do this every show. 
exactly one year ago, Bitcoin was six hundred fifty-one dollars. Mm. So it's going up a hundred times, no, ten times. That's incredible. Yeah, almost ten times. So that's that's where we get our eight hundred percent from. Wow, that's that's mind-boggling. So if we keep this rate up at ten times a year over the next five years, wow, that would be mind-boggling. Next October, sixty thousand dollars. You know, I kind of look at it kind of like I'm a gambler, Tony. And I look at my downside is I could lose, you know, coins worth five thousand dollars. All right, I started getting in when it was thirty six. Oh, just a month ago I was getting in at thirty six hundred. Mm-hmm. So I could be losing those coins, but my upside could be like that one guy said, a million dollars a coin. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm taking this bet and I'm I'm going for a ride. And I'm a hodler. And for those who don't know what a hodler is, I think you're a hodler too, aren't you, Tony? I'm definitely a hodler. A hodler is someone that's holding on for dear life. We're just buying and we're not invest. We're not we're not uh, traders. We're investors and we're hodling. We're holding on for dear life, buying our coins and <laughs> coins and holding on for dear life. I like that. That's one way to look at it. Yes, we're holding on because you know next year, ten times this amount is sixty thousand dollars. So. You know, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. It becomes a little. It becomes a little interesting uh, when you suddenly have all this money and it's not in an account. It's just sitting in your digital wallet. Uh, it's it's it can be a little. It can be a little vertigo there to to imagine that your little um, digital wallet is holding so much money. But we'll talk about digital wallets in an upcoming episode. They're really amazing. Crypto wallets are um, the most important thing you can have. Uh, because again, cryptocurrency is new. It's a wild west, and uh, while there are upsides, there are definitely downsides, and lots of crypto has been lost over the years. Yeah, I talked to a friend of mine the other day who said, "I see on your Facebook page you're into Bitcoin now." And I said, "Yeah, I'm kind of like really into it." And he goes, "Yeah, I know a couple of people have gotten in that, and they've lost a lot of money." And I said, "Really?" I said, "Well, that's only because they sold." When it went down, because right now it's at the highest it's ever been in its life. So how could they lose money? I mean, you know, no matter what you bought it at, even when you bought it, it was the highest it ever was. You still would have made money. So that's the problem with some people who are traders, I guess, instead of hodlers, is they buy it, and it's a it's a really got lots of ups and downs. I'm not going to say it doesn't drastic up and downs, and they see it taking that drastic down, they get out. And they lost money, and then it goes back up. So that's why I said, I'm a hodler. I don't care if it goes down, I'm holding on. I don't care if it dropped in half, I'm holding on. I'm not selling and going, gosh, I got out and lost money in that. Because I believe long term. I'm a believer. I have drank the Kool-Aid, Tony. Yes. If you haven't drank the Kool-Aid, then definitely it looks weird. But once you drink the Kool-Aid and you're inside, man, it's an interesting ride. That's for sure. Well, Tony, I want to say uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. Please, please, please share this show with your friends. If you know anyone who is into crypto or is interested in crypto, tell them about our show. Send them the links, CryptoCousins.com slash play for Android and CryptoCousins.com slash iTunes for uh, iPhones and Apple devices and help us grow this show. We want to get this show cooking, and I think that's the best way people can help us. Yes, listen and uh, share share thanks Tony I'll see you and we'll see everybody next week this is a weekly show I think we should let people know that too got a lot of information I guess on this first show so this show is a little longer than we planned on so I appreciate everybody's patience uh, for us we just have a lot to go over and we are interested in this subject so you know we were planning on doing a half hour show Tony this show may be impossible for us to do in a half hour every week well, right, at least it's our target. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're our, we're having some inflation on on the seconds that we uh, that we spend. <laughs> we do. Hey, Tony, I enjoyed it. Thanks again, everybody, for listening. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a good one. The Crypto Cousins podcast and information in the podcast are not intended as investment advice. Cryptocurrencies are risky. Never invest more than you can afford to lose. Always seek professional advice before making any investment. Investing in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies may present tremendous risks. Please understand that you are using any and all information available on or through the Crypto Cousins podcast at your own risk.